So, pleasure to be here. Ari already gave me a great intro. Um, I'm here to talk to you today about the very salacious issue of the gender gap in tech, but we're going to come at it from the angle of what I hope is also some very salacious data uh, that was gathered experimentally. Uh, before I do that, I want to tell you just a little bit about uh, interviewing IO so you have some context for what I'm going to be discussing and the data that I will share with you. So interviewing IO is an anonymous technical interviewing platform. We help companies hire engineers, but what makes us in some sense unique is that rather than using resumes, we actually use people's past interview performance to predict how they'll do in future interviews. So the way this plays out is we'll give qualified engineers practice, we'll see how they do, gather data from that, and then aggregate it and identify who the strongest performers are. Then companies actually talk to those people right on our platform anonymously. And this seems to be working pretty well. Uh, so far, over half of the candidates that have talked to companies on our platform have ended up either on-site or hired at companies like Yelp, Twitch, Uber, Asana, Mattermark, and, and more. So pretty stoked about that. Um, now, that, um, that said, why not just show you guys what we actually do? I'm going to do something pretty ambitious here, and I'm actually going to try to do a very quick live demo so you can see the platform and so you can actually hear the voice modulation and masking piece that I'm going to be talking about for the remainder of this talk. Here we go. So I've set up a fake interview here with Twilio Signal. And I'm going to enter the queue. There we go. Oh, I've been matched with somebody. Uh, you can actually, my compatriot Andy is in the front row here. I think he's going to play the role of the interviewer. Okay, so this is what our interview environment looks like. Um, you can actually choose programming languages. Uh, there is audio, so we're actually in a call at this moment. And my voice is going to be modulated. You can't hear it now um, because the audio um, is, would be coming from Andy's computer, but I'll play you back a recording really quick so you can actually see what it sounds like. And hopefully I'm going to sound like a guy. But we have um, a place for people to write code, a place for people to actually run it, which we're pretty stoked about. There's also text chat. And basically, companies just talk to people and do a first round technical interview here in exactly the same way that they would in their own process, except that it's anonymous. So if you look in the top right and top left of the screen, you'll see that instead of our names, we have these cutesy little handles. Oh, yeah, I got a chat. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty great. So um, after an interview is over, I'm going to leave this interview. Both parties actually fill out feedback, one about the other. So I'm interviewing, uh, I'm the interviewee in this case, so I'm actually reviewing my interviewer on his questions and uh, whether I want to work with him. He is actually going to be reviewing me on more traditional things like whether I'm good at coding. So um, let me actually play you just a little bit of what that sounded like. and then I'll get to the fun stuff. Okay, so this is the interview that we just did. You can actually replay them, which is kind of cool. So this is what our interview environment looks like. Um, you can actually choose programming languages, uh, there's audio, so we're actually in a call at this moment, and my voice is going to be modulated. You can't hear it now, um, because the audio um, is would be coming from Andy's computer, but I'll play you back. So you get the idea. Um, hopefully, uh, you think I sounded a little different than I normally do. Oh, thank you very much. We're really proud of this. All right, so back to the slides. I can find my, all right, here we go. Great. So we have some pretty cool data that we collect, uh, and that actually enables us to replay our interviews. So as you can probably guess, we have all the code that people write, and that's timestamp. We have all the audio. We have text chat, whiteboard content. We also have a whiteboard where you can draw, uh, and notes taken by the interviewer. That happens during and after an interview. 
we uh, actually give feedback to both sides, as you saw. Uh, interviewers rate their interviewees, interviewees rate their interviewers and themselves. So you saw what I saw as an interviewee where I was rating the question quality, but this is what the interviewer would actually see. And they're rating people on a few different dimensions. So one is a yes, no question. Would you advance this person to the next round? This is the one that's generally the most important for us when we do a behind the scenes uh, ranking of all the people on our platform. And then there are three questions, each on a scale of one to four, where we uh, ask about technical ability, problem solving ability, communication ability. That also feeds into our internal ratings and that's the data we're gonna be using for the experiment I'm gonna talk about in a little bit. We also have some freeform feedback. We don't factor that in for official uh, scoring, but it's really nice and constructive and helps shed some light on the obfuscated black box that interviewing normally is. So, on our platform right now, we have about 1,000 interviews with enough feedback to do data analysis and pseudoscience on, roughly 500 interviewees who've participated, and roughly 15% of whom are women. That's not that much, but you gotta start somewhere. And before we did this experiment where we changed women to sound like men and made men sound like women and saw what happened, we wanted to see how women were doing on this platform relative to men in the absence of voice masking. And what we discovered, and this made me very sad, is that women are performing significantly worse than men. That's puzzling. In particular, men got the, yes, I would advance this person to the next round about 1.4 times as often as women. And men's technical ability was rated roughly 1.2 times higher than that of women. So I think men's average was around a three, and women's was something like a two and a half. So we wanted to know what was going on, um, and some of our customers, actually, I mean, most of our customers care very deeply about this issue of gender bias and technical interviews, so they asked us to write this voice modulation feature that you heard in action. And we wanted to see whether obfuscating people's gender during interviews would actually have any bearing on how those interviews turned out. So, in our experiment, we had 63 participants, uh, 44 men, 19 women. We didn't tell them, obviously, what the purpose of the experiment was. Rather, we just said, hey, we built this thing. We're testing it out. Do you want to maybe take part and help us gather some data so we can make it better? Most people opted in, which was great. Interviewers also didn't know what was going on. We told them, you might hear some funny sounding voices. Mm. So, <laughs> um, and we ended up with 234 interviews that fell into roughly three categories. So those categories were unmodulated interviews that untouched, modulated but didn't have a pitch change, and were modulated with pitch change that effectively swapped people's gender, like you heard uh, when my gender was swapped. So you might ask, why do we need to modulate people's voices without changing their pitch? Well, when you heard my voice, you probably heard, eh, like, that sounds kind of synthetic. So we didn't want interviewers jumping to the conclusion that if somebody's voice sounds synthetic, that means necessarily we flip their gender. So we said, hey, you, you might hear some people whose uh, pitch has been changed, maybe not. Either way, it's all gonna be weird. We don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> so um, what, what did end up happening? Um, do you, what do you guys think? What do you think happened when we made men sound like women and women sound like men? Who performed better? Okay, so the, the hypothesis here, and this was my hypothesis as well, was uh, when you made women sound like men, they would do better. Here's what actually happened. No difference. Now, I'm gonna give you the usual caveat about how we actually don't have that much data. It's a few hundred data points. It's really not that much. But if there were any staggering gender bias trends, we probably would have uncovered them at this point. What we did see and I'm remiss in even mentioning this because this wasn't statistically significant, but I'm mentioning it because it was kind of weird and this is something we're gonna keep an eye out for as we keep working on it. The opposite of what you guys thought happened, happened. So when we made men sound like women, they actually did a little bit better. <laughs> and when we made women sound like men, they actually did a little bit worse. Again, not statistically significant, would not be publishing a paper about this but it's something that we're gonna investigate in the future. But this doesn't really answer this fundamental question of why women are performing worse, at least on our platform. And 
this is a question that, that I was very curious to understand, that, that I was hoping I'd get some satisfaction with these results, but I didn't. So I started kind of scratching my head. And one of the things I do a lot uh, with my free time is listen to interviews uh, that happened on our platform or just look to see what our users are doing. And one kind of worrisome trend that I had noticed anecdotally was that it seemed like there were a lot more women who would quit after a bad interview than men. So I decided to run the numbers and, and uh, see what would happen. And those are the numbers. So uh, red is girls and blue is boys. <laughs> um, and the uh, y-axis here is how many people quit. And the x-axis is the number of bad interviews. So as you can see, after one bad interview, roughly 30% of women end up leaving the platform as compared to, I think, 3.2% of men. After two bad interviews, another 13% of women leave as compared to 2.8% of men. And of course, these results are extremely statistically significant. So I told one of our engineers, holy shit, this is amazing. 30% of women leave after one bad interview, only 3% of men. He's like, clearly you know nothing about dating from a man's perspective. <laughs> Um, so I guess there, there's something to men and them, them being persistent, uh, which maybe makes sense. Um, but uh, it's also worth, worth mentioning that here we, we did correct for people finding jobs, right? Interviewing is not that awesome or fun. You're not going to do it for shits and giggles. You're probably doing it because you're on the job market. So this isn't people getting jobs. This wasn't people just trying out the platform. This wasn't people leaving because um, they didn't like the platform or had a bad experience. This we're pretty confident can be attributed to their interview performance. And keep in mind, too, that these interviews are entirely anonymous. So your failure and shame are very private to you. And despite that, people still left in droves. So I wanted to dig a little bit deeper into all of this because it, it really surprised me. So I decided to do kind of a thought experiment. And what follows is going to be extremely speculative based on not very much data and probably entirely wrong. But you have to start somewhere, so let's, let's go on this journey together. Um, I started thinking a little bit about if this is what attrition looks like on our platform, what does attrition look like in our industry in general where there are plenty of opportunities to mess things up? So, really was, was confused and, and upset about this, and as, as with anybody who's in a moral or existential quandary, I decided to make a, a graph. And this is my attempt to fit curves to the data that we have. So let me explain what, what this is. Uh, the blue line here is attrition for men. The red is attrition for women. And the points that you see up there are um, the points that we actually have, and the rest uh, is largely speculative. The y-axis here is uh, how many people are remaining. X-axis is how many of these, what I call, attrition events can have occurred. So maybe it was a bad test. Maybe it was a bad interview. Maybe it was some other bad experience that you had at some point in your, between your education uh, in high school, um, where some people start coding in university, and then ultimately during your job search. So you can see that the, the gender gap in these speculative curves can get quite stark. And pulling this kind of out of thin air, I thought if there are eight of these events where there's an opportunity to drop off, and maybe these eight events occur between when people first start getting into coding and go to school and then come out and start interviewing for jobs, what needs to happen to get the same number of men and women in a company's pipeline? So you can see from the, from the graphs, we would have to triple the number of women. But the, keep in mind, that's not tripling the number of women compared to the status quo. We need three times as many more women as there are men. And if you look at enrollment numbers in university for computer science programs, depending on which source you look at, it's between one in three and one in four uh, students are women. So you take those numbers, you take this, and then you end up with roughly a need to increase the number of women studying computer science by an entire order of magnitude. <laughs> so I'm sad. Um, I don't want to end this, this talk on a sad note. So I'll, I'll tell you this. Um, 
initially we thought maybe there's some gender bias. I, I was really happy to see, at least on our platform, that uh, there wasn't systemic gender bias against female interviewees. Um, and despite that, women were performing worse. But what, what I noticed when I looked at this data closer and I started correcting for the women who dropped off. So taking out performance scores for women who left after the first interview and taking off performance scores for women who left after the second, there was no difference in performance between men and women. So that to me was extremely encouraging. So maybe it's not about gender bias and it's not about women somehow being innately worse at computers <laughs> or whatever. Uh, rather, it might be about women being worse at dusting themselves off after they've experienced a failure. And to me, that's pretty encouraging because I think that's something that is a lot easier to fix. Okay. Thank you very much.